The recently announced AX Weapon Stabilizer offers some interesting possibilities for the near future. Though this module does not take things as far as I would wish, having two additional AX hardpoints to work with means more effective damage potential for any ship with enough hardpoints to be able to apply it. We don't yet know very much about the stabilizer, only that it will be an optional internal available in two sizes that will provide for one or two additional AX hardpoints, depending on the size. It's likely this new stabilizer module will be restricted to a single unit per ship. I highly doubt that we will be given more capability than that. So I thought it would be helpful to highlight some ships that will be able to benefit the most from this new module based on their current hardpoints. I can't guarantee any of these ships will actually benefit, since we still don't know how big or how demanding the AX weapon stabilizer will be. But they are hulls to keep in mind for when this new module becomes available. The Crate Mark II is already one of the most popular AX ships in the game. With five total hardpoints, the crate has always been just one weapon away from a full AX interceptor loadout. The crate would only need the medium stabilizer to be able to fit an all-guardian loadout. While most pilots throw a flak launcher in the spare hardpoint slot, or double up on flak and run three AX weapons in the large hardpoints, it's been a dream of some AX commanders to be able to load up on Guardian Goss and have a good old-fashioned barbecue. Since most AX commanders already have a crate, I expect we'll see some retrofitting in the coming days. Just how much will depend on the willingness of pilots to abandon all ability to fight Thargons. With a size 7 capacitor fully engineered, the crate can drive a lot of power to its hardpoints, more than most other medium ships. So I'm interested to see what an all shard or all plasma charger loadout does. The Federal Dropship. Like the crate, this ship comes fitted with five hardpoint mounts, meaning it would only require the medium AX stabilizer to load all the way up. With four medium and one large hardpoint, this ship is perfectly positioned to take advantage of the Salvation Variant Guardian weapons. It's been left out of the Thargoid party mostly due to its slower speed compared to the Federal Assault Ship and Chieftain. With a max engineered boost in the high 400s, the dropship is just fast enough to keep pace with a fight, and remains maneuverable enough to tangle with interceptors, though the Federal Piggies also have a lower hull hardness than their Alliance counterparts, making them less durable in some situations. The Federal Gunship is the toughest and the slowest, but with seven hardpoints, using the medium stabilizer would allow a Guardian weapon in all but the two small hardpoints, or for two flak launchers to complement five AX weapons. Not sure if this will be good enough to overcome the hull's infamously slow speed and lazy handling characteristics, but with all weapons on target, there is a lot of damage to be reckoned with. I don't expect the stabilizer to make either Federal ship more popular, at least not by much, but they are both in an interesting position since their base hull hardness is higher than the crate, but weaker than the chieftain. I've made a mental note about both labeled Instagib with a big question mark. I plan on experimenting with these ships more once the new module comes out. The chieftain is in an interesting position as well. With six hardpoints, this ship would need the large stabilizer to run a full AX loadout. It's very well positioned to do so, being fast enough to outrun Thargons with engineering, Packing on a single medium hardpoint, this ship has never been the best for going up against the Swarm, though now we can abandon all pretense of Thargon offensive ability and make an already deadly ship even better at killing interceptors. One potential downside with this ship is that the two hardpoints you gain will be small, since most AX builds I'm familiar with use the large and medium mounts for AX damage and the smalls for thermal vent beam lasers. Now there is a possibility for more flexibility, whether it's compelling enough to warrant a retrofit remains to be seen. The Mamba and the Fertilance are essentially variations of the same idea. Both are efficient Thargoid killers in the right hands, and are fairly unique as two of only three ships currently available with six utility mounts. With a heavy emphasis on shielding, both platforms have a good chance at being able to spare the optional space required for a stabilizer. If only we had access to some huge class AX weapons. The Anaconda. 
Left to languish due to its terrible combat handling and slow speeds, commanders flying this ship have no choice but to embrace damage attrition. At least now they can add two medium hard points that spit even harder in a Thargoid's eye. All jokes aside, larger ships stand to benefit greatly from this new stabilizer technology, since they have been the most neglected by AX weapon limits. It's possible for a few of the large ships, the Anaconda included, to solo gib a Cyclops at close range under the right conditions. Now it isn't hard to imagine solo gibbing becoming the primary way that low-level interceptors are handled. It would certainly make station defense operations easier to deal with. Part of me hopes that the Anaconda gets some new life in the stabilizer paradigm. The Anaconda gets a bad rap for its handling and speed. It does, however, bring substantial shielding to the party, alongside great armor and abundant internal space. There are a lot of right ways to fit this ship, and even more to be said for being so thick the Interceptor needs to stop in order to fight you, an attribute the Anaconda shares with the Type 10, making it easier for the medium ships to get some free shots in. The Federal Corvette is my actual recommendation if you want to fight Interceptors with a large ship. It's faster and more maneuverable. The Corvette was already a stalwart force to be reckoned with in big fights. With a large stabilizer, this ship will be able to use all but one hardpoint for AX combat. Definitely something to keep an eye on, though it serves as yet another reminder that we don't have any huge AX weapons yet. On the upside, this means the Federal Corvette's massive power distributor has a ton of headroom for sustaining damage with some very demanding weapons. An all-plasma charger or all-goss cannon build remains a popular ambition made even more attainable now though it's at a slight disadvantage compared to the Anaconda, in that you can only fit three large Guardian weapons to a Corvette, but you can fit four to the Anaconda. An Imperial Cutter, with its near adamantine shield, was already dangerous. I've seen a lot of commanders undersize the large and huge hardpoints to keep their AX damage centered on this hull. Now they have the option to add some additional weapons to their wing pods, while these edge-mounted weapons are unlikely to work well with precision damage, having some extra exertion damage in your back pocket is always helpful. This new module is likely to drive ships farther into specialization, and means that smaller ships are likely to be brought out into swarm and scout-focused builds. This isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's likely to be preferable in the long run. There are a lot of small ships that can dance with the Thargon swarm effectively, with my personal favorite being the Viper III. If you want to build a ship for AX combat, but don't want to throw a ton of resources at it, then I recommend starting small and testing the waters. In group battles, larger ships can repair you in the field, and will thank you kindly for clearing out the Thargon Swarm. Until we have better weapons to fight the Swarm, it's going to be a small, fast, and agile game that is often highly underrated. I'm sure there are ships that should have made this list that I have missed. Let me know in the comments. That's all I have for today. So I'll catch you all later.